Hello and thank you for joining me on our daily culture magazine here on i24 News. I'm Oded Grober and today on our show, designer Gidon Oberzon will be here to talk about women, kitchens and swimsuits of course. The Kameri Theatre takes its play Ghetto to Budapest. And leading up to the World Cup, Brazilian artists express their rage on the streets. Born in Italy and educated in France, Guidon Oberzon designed many things, including carpets and kitchens, but to most his name is unanimous with swimsuits. Since uh, starting his business in 1976, Oberzon has made a name for himself as an influential designer, a teacher at Schenkal College, and an all-around nice guy. Very happy to welcome Gidon Oberzon to our studio. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. So let's, uh, let's uh, start with uh, Gidon Oberzon, the brand. For the, f uh, the first time in uh, nearly a decade, it's uh, out of Gothix. It's back in your hands. Yeah. How does that feel? It feels wonderful. Actually, I was designing bathing suits for 30 years, but couture, mm -hmm. starting 64, which is much longer. Oh, but bathing okay. suit is the issue that really this is the line that we export, so I'm much more well known for this uh, the line. 10 years did for Gotex, the Gotex line as well the Oberzen line. Mm -hmm. Since a period that they decided to do everything in China, I have nothing against producing in China, but when they decided to move the studio, which is my in, in the heart of the design, right. I resigned and said, sorry, this is not my way. They continue still like four years to design under my name. The success was not big, and mm. then my name is back, and now I'm taking all power to restart and to come back to the market. Uh, we produce in Turkey. In okay. Israel, we don't have any industry, but the studio is the heart in Tel Aviv. I see. So you I still believe, get to, to feel the material? I have to feel the material. It's not enough for me to give a sketch and to give it to somebody else. That somebody else is going to translate it. And then, you know what? Fashion is not translation. It, it might be copied exactly what the Chinese are doing perfectly, but not design. And then the reason that in Turkey, which is very close, Two hours of flight, and I'm there. Right now, the the let's talk about designing these swimsuits. About coming up with that sketch that you mentioned. Yeah. What's your process like? What do you? Where well, do you first begin? First of all, we have different markets. It's really very strange. You have to know the body of the woman. You have to know the material. Right. And it's so interesting that the markets are completely different. In London, for instance, mm -hmm. to design for an English market, first of all, big flowers and prints. The English person, after the period of winter and everything is gray, they don't buy actually a swimsuit, but probably they will never wear it on the beach. They're buying summer. I they're see. buying summer in the winter. They go in shop and they dress up like they're buying the light, the summer, and the sun. That's a beautiful insight. This is actually the English. Um, the German is buying sex. She wants a swimsuit which will be very, very tight. She likes the animal prints. Mm -hmm. She likes to be very strong. The Italian are completely different. She will buy gray and very monochromatic because of the men's. And the man, the Italian man, is very jealous. Uh -huh. He will never let her go <laughs> in, in, any, flashy. in any flashy and a tiger skin, for instance. <laughs> okay. What about Israel? And America is the most conservative. Okay. Once she's undressed, she's dressed herself with a suit which is fully lined, fully, fully lined. Yeah. You have all the support of tummy control. You have all kinds of uh, wire cups, push-ups. The Israeli is really, she's looking for sex. She doesn't mind. She's buying always two sizes smaller okay. because she always... <laughs> Are in the future, Planning I'm going. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, lose. Lose. She's optimistic. <laughs> I'm going to lose weight, losing weight, and she's always buying too small. I see. All right. So you know, well, what? It, it's fun. Actually, time will it, it, yeah, there's a, a lot, lot to take fun. into account. It's a lot of fun. That's yeah, right. we're seeing now uh, some some of the stuff Castor. that you've done with Castro. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, for instance, with Castro in Israel, it's a different market. It's a market of a young woman mm -hmm. who wants to wear really good quality of a swimsuit, 
I think the design is perfect, lined also with all the support, and the production is made abroad, of course, and yep. the price is very reasonable. Yep. This is half of the price of Oberson. The problem with swimsuit in Israel is that we have high prices, everybody is buying it only end of the season. Mm. So when you make the calculation, it looks it's very expensive, but on the end, 80% of the production is sold in sales. Right. And, and Castro, they're actually for the next for season. For the next season. And Castro, our Oberson price, sale price, is the Castro normal price. Yeah, and well, we're very successful. With the there's market. something for everyone. Exactly. Now, you've uh, been working with your daughter in the last few years. Uh, 30 years Very closely. More, very close, yeah. How, how does that work? It was perfectly. First of all, she's taking care about all the textile, all the print textile, all the sources. It's about her. Mm -hmm. I'm talking with her, sitting together. I'm doing the design by himself. I'm doing the pattern okay. because I'm skilled to do it with my hands. But we are using both brains to see what we're doing and how do we are doing. And the sources, the inspiration. Our collection are always inspired. Each collection has a... Um, a issue, a target, mm -hmm. a I name. See. So last last year we did like uh, urban, urban uh, city, the uh, the uh, red light, yeah. and the whole the full collection was in red, green, and yellow. A year before we did sandy colors and beach. So with my daughter, first of all, she's my best partner. We work together, or not only in the studio. Yeah, we are in evening meals, you know, because the it's part of the job. It's a part of the job in the family affair. So actually, we are together, working together, and I think that we are very happy the way Beautiful. we're doing it. Beautiful. Last question. Uh, you've uh, designed kitchens as well. Now, I personally can't think that uh, there's anything further than swimsuits. Well, kind of kitchen, the opposite. It's for me the same. Once you have, once you have, you're, you're the designer, and especially that my designs are very architectural. Nice. The way that I start to design, I take a crayon, I take a paper, and I make sketches. I have a feeling for fabrics, but I don't start from the fabric. I start from the sketch. Nice. So going into kitchen and to give them concept and actually inspiration, and I brought them into in order to do a kitchen, you do a concept a fashion and then and you change your kitchen from from year to year mm -hmm. in fashion we change twice a year mm -hmm. in the kitchen world we change one every five years there's a new concept that's enough what's next for you um, i'm going to uh, casa oberzon which is textile for home i'm very excited about it we are building now a big process with uh, a company, Hometex, which is using with uh, Hamashbir Lassarhan. It will be a very, very big business. I made like 25, 30 different styles of uh, textile for home. Wonderful. And I'm looking forward to it. Oh, going to so, great. So, so, do, uh, so do we. Uh, Gidono Bozon, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Bye. Last week, the impossible story of the Vilnius Ghetto Theater came to life in Budapest, where 70 years ago the deportation of Jews to the death camps began. Performed by the Israeli Kamari Ensemble, the play Ghetto took an, a new meaning in this historically scarred location. Here's the report by Shachal Pelet. It was a long journey for the company of the Camry Theatre of Tel Aviv to Budapest to perform a legendary piece, Joshua Sobol's Ghetto in Hungary's National Theatre. The Ghetto is the right play, in the right place, on the right subject, in the right year. This is probably one of the most important play written in Israel in the last 35-40 years. That's a very, very significant, very beautiful piece. But the significance is doubled, as performing ghetto in Hungary marks 70 years since the deportation of the country's Jews to the extermination camps. It's a very big event, marking 70 years of the deportation of Jews from Hungary to the death camps. But on the other hand, 70 years to the Kamari Theater. It's a symbol of a spiritual and physical revival of Jews and Israelis. 
The play depicts the incredible story of the Jewish theatre, which was active in the Vilnius ghetto during World War II. Debuting in Israel in 1984, ghetto quickly became famous all over the world, eventually translated to more than 20 languages and performed in 66 theatres with great success, from Tokyo to London. Now coming to life in the exact place where Jews were expelled from 70 years earlier, the location gives it an additional meaning. Performing here, you really uh, felt that this show belongs to here, to Europe, even more maybe than Israel. But with some 2,500 people in the crowd, including major Hungarian government and parliament members, security was always on high alert. The entire journey of the Camerys ghetto play is accompanied by security forces who are securing the building and the delegation because of threats, neo-Nazi groups and protests against Israel and Jews. We are open for any discussion this play generates and it indeed raises many complex questions in more than one subject. So we're happy also for the controversial aspects of the ideas this play brings. Actor Taichi Ran knows controversial up close as he portrays the difficult part of the Nazi officer. One of the play's highlights takes place during a scene of a selection of the children in the ghetto determining who lives and who dies. The children in the play this time were Hungarian and the entire scene was in Hungarian, giving terrible chills to everyone in the audience. It suddenly got an additional meeting. With the children not being necessarily Jewish, it could have been children from any background. For a new generation that come here and, and grew up here and which are not Jewish, you know, I, I don't know how, I, I didn't know how, how they will accept us and they are really touched, I don't know. With overwhelming reactions from the audience, performing the play in Budapest marks a new hope, that of a spiritual fight against the rising anti-Semitism and proving that the show will always go on. In uh, just a moment, we'll see how recent protests against the World Cup have inspired artists in Brazil. But first, some cultural highlights from around the world. Maripol Negre, a photographer in the major leagues of reportage and a founding member of Leica, has a sense of reality in her photography work by bringing honor to the poor and the oppressed. The exhibition of her work will take place in Paris at the European House of Photography until August the 31st. American legends from Calder to O'Keeffe showcases at the Whitney Museum of Art. The exhibition includes the work by leading artists such as Alexander Calder, Stuart Davis, Edward Hopper, Jasper Jones and Georgia O'Keeffe. Presentations provide a survey of each artist's work across a range of media platforms. The exhibition will take place until June the 29th. The Israeli debut of American identical twin brothers Doug and Mike Stern, known for their large-scale art exterior installations constructed from bamboo, their works have been displayed in the Metropolitan Museum in New York, Rome's Museum of Modern Art. The artist created an installation resembling a massive organism made of thousands of bamboo canes tied together with colored strings. The exhibition will take place at the Art Garden at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem until October the 1st. The recent social protests against the World Cup in Brazil have inspired local artists to express their anger through different mediums. Daniel Campos is here in the studio to tell us a little bit about it. Thanks for, thank you for coming in, Daniel. Hello, Adel. Thank you for having me. And yeah, well, we have a lot of interesting uh, topics. Uh, Counterculture. Again, uh, a lot of people are angry. The, the World Cup is costing $11 billion in a and we could say a socially torn country, classrooms, yeah. hospitals, everything is in bad shape. This is probably the iconic image of the moment, Paulo Ito's graffiti against FIFA. A boy, you know, you can see the dish has a ball. We need food, not football. That's pretty yeah. much the statement. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's obvious, Latin it's, America. It's a very strong image. Very no strong No question image. about it. Uh, controversial. Uh, we can say FIFA, the relationship between FIFA and Latin America is very complicated. FIFA decided to host the first World Cup in Brazil in 1970 while there was a dictatorship, a military junta in government. They mm -hmm. did not care. Uh, we have a, in 1973 in Chile, FIFA hosted a game, official game between Chile and USSR in a stadium where people were being tortured to death by the Pinochet regime. Uh, so people are in Latin so, America. Uh, in, in, in a way, we have made some progress, uh, even if we're not uh, exactly where we'd like to be. Well, we 
can say so. <laughs> uh, the, the most important thing is that at least, you know, it's a platform for artists, at, at right. least in a counter counterculture. Opni, uh, Edu Krieger with his new song, Excuse Me Neymar. Neymar is the most popular player of the Brazilian team. And he's saying, excuse me, Neymar, I won't be able to support you in this World Cup mm. because I'm sad about the tragedy, the, condition, the bad conditions of the country. Right. And it's getting a lot of exposure. A lot of people are uh, checking it out. Excuse me, Neymar is a viral song. You can check it out on YouTube by Edu Krieger. Beautiful lyrics. All right. Uh, that sounds uh, pretty interesting. I'm pretty sure that they'll manage to, to uh, throw the World Cup anyway and, uh, and enjoy it as, uh, as we will uh, hear. Daniel, thank you. Thank you, Rodet. Thank you for uh, joining us as well. I hope you enjoyed watching our show. You can find our past shows online, i24news.tv, also on YouTube. You can also find us on uh, Facebook and Twitter. And we'll be here again tomorrow with a whole new show for you. Join us again, please. Bye-bye.